Ring. I'm the owner of Mrs. Pinkadot here on Granby Street. We have a variety of things. Combination. Some is repurposed, uh, such as the coffee bar you were just looking at. And I've always painted furniture and I've always looked for, you know, the junk. I like to I like to go out and pick. I like to go, you know, dig through basements and attics and garages and barns and looking for stuff. Um, I like the repurposing aspect of it. Less stuff going in the landfills. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We've been here three and a half years. It'll be four years in September. So it's been a bit gone fast most weeks. Three different things go on here. Number one, I've got all my stuff, and I have a lot of stuff that I've painted. I've got a lot of project pieces, and then a lot of things that I find along the way. I've got uh, vendors that rent space ongoing, so they pay rent, and they are responsible for their own spaces, and they bring things in, and they keep it stocked. A lot of my vendors ha do paint furniture, and others, they just like collections, and they have certain things that they gravitate to, and that's what they bring in to sell. And then my consigners, I've got quite a few regular consigners that have been consigning with me since I opened. Um, my name is Kim. I'm with the Phoenix Gallery. I um, take lots of old furniture. I like to take old items and repurpose. And I love that I could see something and, you know, that was the whole purpose behind the name, you know, just bringing something back to life, it rising from the ashes to live a new cycle. Um, so I can show you some examples. Yeah. Um, like this here is an old door. And then I married it with a desk drawer. So on the other side, it's hard, you know, because it's up against the wall, but there's drawers on that side. So this piece here slid into a desk. And then I added feet and I turned it into a hall tray. Now this piece back here is an antique washstand. We made that a coffee bar. It's pretty interesting. I was in childcare for over 10 years and my husband had his own company. And then 2008 happened to us and we went out of business. And so out of like survival <laughs> to furnish my house and do things, I just started to create things myself and find, you know, people's trash and try to turn it into some kind of a treasure. Right now it's like all the craze, right? Well, back then, you know, people were throwing stuff away all the time. Now it's like you could barely find like a curbside find because somebody's grabbing it. But back then, I mean, I would just pick up all kinds of trash um, and stick it in the back of my car, push my kids over, slide something in the minivan. So yeah, people thought I was nuts. My kids thought I was nuts. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can make something out of, you know, somebody else's trash and, and you know, the recycling thing is, is a big deal. It's a big deal for our environment. It's a big deal for our landfill. So I don't, I don't think it's going anywhere. I hope not anyway, because I'd be really sad. <laughs> <laughs> I love what I do, so. Hello. How are you today? Good. You come to look around? Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> it's a lady with a chair. <laughs> I think she's going back to talk to Dusty. Um, well, my name is Dusty Ferguson. Um, I, I guess I'm the owner and proprietor of Patina Revived. I've been refinishing and restoring furniture for almost 20 years now. Um, and started out just being poor and not having nice things. And that's why I decided to, you know, hand me down. But, um, Want to do it? And then it just snowballed from there, okay. family, friends, um, and now I focus a lot on custom work. I do do some things to sell, but as far as my passion is doing projects for my clients, bringing their vision to life, um, that's what I like to do. So, um, like this right here is a dining China cabinet for a client that I already did their server. I have this in their buffet to do. And, you know, just keeping things that were in their family, but making them lighter and brighter and functional. Um, I really like to do builds, but I haven't been able to do that in quite some time because I'm so busy with my custom work. I think the hype of it will slow down at some point. It has to. Every bubble bursts. Um, but 
it'll just evolve into something else. It'll change into something else. I, I really feel um, probably in the next 10, 15 years, I'm going to be stripping a lot of these pieces and bringing them back to their natural because <laughs> mm-hmm. um, we go through those phases. And that's actually my passion is um, restoring antiques and keeping them. <laughs> so... Um, you know, I'm kind of excited about it. I love painting stuff too, but um, I love restoring things. Like this buffet right here is in shambles, and I've had it for four years, and I'm like, I'm going to restore it. Like everybody wants me to paint it. I have a lot of the molding pieces, and I love to actually make molds of the pieces that I don't have and replicate it. And, yeah, um, I guess. Plus, I got to the point where I think if I would advertise myself a little, I would get too overwhelmed because I'm really actually quite busy now, and um, have to get to a place where I could hire somebody. I don't know if I want to do that. Or not. So, um, so yeah. I, I moved here five years ago from California, and I did the same kind of thing out in California. And I moved here, my son's here, he's been here about 17 years, and I moved here to be closer to him. And I knew that I'd probably open something. As for the past few years, as people got to know me and saw my business build and grow, um, I was always being asked, how do I do this? How do I go from having a hobby? How do I sell furniture? How do I set up my Facebook page? How do I open a store? How do I rent a booth and be successful? So I realized that if so many people are asking, there must be a need. So with all my experience and my successes, I thought, well, then we need to develop this more and be a resource for those folks so they can learn from me all the things that I've learned and learn from my mistakes and my successes. So uh, we'll be going through workshops of how to get a business license, how to set up a Facebook page, how to to really stay engaged with social media, um, how to set up a market if you want to do a vintage market, how to be a successful booth owner or renter, because it does take a little technique and if I can save people time and money, that's what the classes and the group is for. Most of the time, it's the confidence building that we work on, that you probably already know how to do this, you just need someone to tell you it's okay. And someone to say, yeah, you can do this, if I can do this, why can't anybody do it? So, it's, it, that's a lot of it. I think it's also, it's a, we're building a community of people that all support and help each other. Mm. Yeah. Don't, don't think it has to be perfect. Done is better than perfect, mm. is a saying I, I hear regularly. Um, or finished is better than perfect. Uh, it'll never be perfect and it'll always be changing. And even my business, it changes every week, every month, every year. We have different goals, different directions, different things going on. So it's always changing. You cannot stay the same. You have to keep changing. Just do it. What are you waiting for?